All right, we're good. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, the question is, I thought that Google Meet allowed recording of video and audio, and you could download it directly to your laptop, whereas Zoom had uh, restrictions on recording and did not use lock closed captions, as does Google Meet, and that when you recorded maybe audio, it went to the Zoom cloud rather than you, you could not download it as a file to your computer. Uh, great questions, and we can definitely start there. Um, I am sharing my screen right now. This is a document some of you may have seen before. Um, this is a document that kind of compares uh, Zoom and Meet that I created. Um, so I am going to throw the link for that in the chat in a minute. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry, I, <laughs> this is my first time actually orchestrating this with my dual monitor, so I'm glad that you all are helping me practice. Um, so I'll throw the link after I'm done sharing. Um, so Zoom allows you to choose where you record. You have to set it up in the settings, um, but you can record to the cloud, which my understanding from Robin is please don't. Uh, because we don't have very much space on our cloud storage, um, or you can choose to record locally. So when I record Zoom, I record it to my laptop. Um, that's locally, and then I can upload it. And so depending on what it's for, so this I'll put on Google Drive and only share the link with those who want it. Were I to be making a video for my class, I actually have a YouTube channel that I put it up on. Um, and then put the link for that on Blackboard. Uh, with Google Meet, when you record, it actually automatically just saves to your Google Drive. Um, so that is one way where you're not taking up hard drive space and you also don't have to worry about our limited Zoom cloud storage. And both of them will record video and audio and the chat, which is really helpful. Um, so even like I did a session just with Jen uh, where the two of us were playing with things on Friday. And even though I wasn't recording the session, it still saved the chat afterwards. Um, so that was something I didn't know happened until I did that. So yes, you can record with either. Um, one thing I'll say about recording is think about whether you want to record. So for example, for my WGS 219 class, I'm not planning to record because I feel like that might stifle discussion on some of these more controversial issues. But for my lecture classes, I am going to. Um, and obviously, if I had a student who was out because they had COVID, I might talk to my WGS class about whether they would feel comfortable recording and just sharing it with that student. Uh, so yeah, those are things you need to think about in terms of logistics is, um, you know, making your students aware you'll record. So when you go to record on Google Meet, it actually pops up a little like consent statement, which is really helpful. Zoom does not do that. Um, but this is uh, best practices I've learned from some of the workshops I've done this summer is to let people know when you are recording um, so that if they don't want their face on screen for some reason, they don't have to. Um, or tell them, you know, I'm not sticking this on YouTube. You're not going to be up there. You know, for example, I will turn off my camera if I know something's being recorded and posted publicly if Quinn is with me because I don't want her up on the internet. So. Did I answer all parts of your question, Bill, or do you have any follow-ups? You did. Thank you. What, what, oh so before you, uh, when you set up your Zoom meeting, you go to settings and you, there's a place there where you can record it to your uh, Google Drive or... Exactly. Yeah. And the nice thing is, is when you set that up in your Zoom settings, it just saves that. Um, so you don't have every meeting. Once you tell Google me or uh, tell Zoom, this is where I want to save it. It'll just do save it there every time, unless you tell it something different. Okay. I have a question too. If you're in the classroom and you need to save it for a student who might be out, but you're you're not doing it on, you're not using your own laptop. How do you do that? Yeah. So this is something I know Robin has been talking about. Um, so there, what you could do is save it to the cloud temporarily, and then once you get back to your office, download it to your computer and delete it off the cloud. Um, again, with Google Meet might be a nice option there because it does automatically save it to your drive. Um, and so we, it's that space. Um, 
but yeah, that is tricky. And I know a lot of you are going to run into that where you have to record in the classroom. You don't want to bring your laptop over unless you're teaching in Greer and you have to. Right? <laughs> so yeah, I think that that's uh, a really important point. Well, Taryn, I have a question. Sure. Um, yesterday I was in one of the classrooms I'm going to teach. And I, I think uh, somebody mentioned that if you are recording and doing Zoom in the classroom, you cannot use your screen for presentations or anything else. Is that true? You can. No, no, you should be able to. So, so you all can see my screen right now. You should be able to put your presentation up on the screen while you're recording Zoom. Including the table projector? The table projector, maybe you could aim the camera at it. I think that would be the way to do it. Um, yeah, that would be how you would have to do it with the table projector. Okay. Even though there's a hack for that. The only well, other that's thing that would probably going to be the main, problem, the main problem for all of us because you're going to have one or two students at home um, and you're, you're, you're doing your class and, and you have to use the computer and the projector in the classroom at the same time. So I couldn't figure out how that's going to work there. Anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, that definitely makes sense. Um, and these are things that I think that as people get into the classrooms, they're still trying to figure out. I know that people who have gone in and have said some places the cameras weren't set up earlier in the week, some places the tape isn't on the ground yet. So they're still, <coughs> um, which I know makes all of us anxious <laughs> because we want to be ready, right, and safe. So yeah. Um, it will be finagling, I think, as we all learn the new equipment and figuring out how to sort of combine new and old methods. Okay. Other uh, questions about one word about <laughs> Google. Go ahead, Bill. One word about the breakout rooms in Google Meet. I think as of yesterday, I was trying to, I was thinking, trying to have a, uh, an add-on if it would work, but apparently the add-ons that we are available right now just are really hard, difficult to work. And so uh, I just gave up on Google Meet because I need the breakout rooms. Yeah, uh, Cahal is our resident expert of that. I was going to reach out to him to see if he could be here and share his info on that. And I just forgot with everything I'm trying to get ready. So I would highly recommend reaching out to him if you wanted to breakout rooms on Google Meet. But my understanding is even with a basic Zoom account, you can do the breakout rooms. Uh, so that's something that is a possibility. Taryn? Yeah. Forgive me. Who did you say was the resident expert on Google Meet? <laughs> the whole woods. And not on Google Meet in general, though he might be because He's very good with Google platform in general, but um, specifically doing breakout rooms on Google Meet. You have to have a third party extension to do it because it's not programmed. Right, forgive me, I still didn't understand you. Could I'll you put it in, in the chat the room? Because that'll probably be easier. <laughs> Paul did share with um, Sue Larkin what he had put together for Google Meet the extension. And I don't know if it made it to, if it made it to that document yet. So, um, quick tutorial, if you are unfamiliar with the basics of Zoom, if you, depending on the mode you're in, this may just show up, um, but if you're not in full screen mode, you have to hover your mouse along the bottom for a lot of the controls to pop up. Um, and so then you'll see where you can, um, where you can stop your video. And so you might want to choose a profile picture to throw up there because otherwise it just is blank. Um, and there are options to look at the list of participants. Um, there are options to see the chat. Um, and this is a good way to uh, do things like when Frank wasn't understanding Cahal's name, I can throw it in the chat, right? Or if you have a link, like I shared the link to the document I was just screen sharing, you put it in the chat and then everyone can access it. Um, there uh, are options for recording. Now, if you have said other people can't record, they won't be able to, even if they click on it. Um, closed captions uh, for Zoom, you have to assign someone to do it. So either a third party program or you ask one of your students to do it. 
So that is a big drawback of Zoom, is that there are not automatic cop captions like Google Meet. Um, and then reactions. So you can do a clap or a thumbs up without speaking uh, down there. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People have actually used that a lot in AEC meetings, so <laughs> informal posts. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually going to show you another feature you may or may not be aware of. I am going to deploy you all a poll. And so this should pop up on your screen. Long the so go ahead and there should be three questions and go ahead and Is respond to them. Talking to the Blackboard? <laughs> talking about Google Meet. I think somebody might need to mute their microphone. 20 faculty. Oh, good. <clears throat> and she's here. No, she can't see. Oh, okay. So yeah, go ahead and answer the poll. And the great poll. Well, guess what? I'm in. I don't know. I went to get rid of it all. And hey, Clay, you might want to mute. <laughs> uh, as you all are filling out the poll, I can actually see your responses in real time, which is pretty There's cool. a poll. <laughs> I don't need a poll. <clears throat> are we supposed to be able to see when we submitted a response? I've hit it and nothing happens. Um, you know, I think it depends, and I don't think I did the option that you all would see your results. So. Oh, but it doesn't do anything. I just click on submit, and it doesn't even change color or anything. Okay. No. <laughs> not supposed to. Okay. So this is no, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> Again, like, <laughs> the technology is still developing. <laughs> I had the same problem. I had to realize that I needed to scroll down to get to the third question. Ah, there you go. So make sure you answer all three questions. Yeah. yeah. So Taryn, will you show us how to okay. how to create that poll, poll like yeah, you did? Definitely, definitely. Oh, I guess. Now, one of the tricky things about this is when I'm in Zoom, I can't actually show you. Zoom. Uh, but I do have Zoom's help session <clears throat> up, and so I can share that with you all as we go through. Okay. okay. All right, so there's 16 of 18 people have voted. 17 of 18. Oh, I didn't vote, so that's probably what it is. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. And then I can go ahead and share with you all. So now you can see the poll results. So um, some people have never used Zoom. Some people have only done as a participant. Most people are sort of in this, I feel pretty. Know where it is. We don't know what we're doing here. Um, and then Google Meet, about the same, but more people just as a participant. No, I'm right here. And then in terms of. Uh, okay, I, I see microphone. What do I do? Click on it? Kind of spread out through everything here. Yeah, yeah. So that's really nice. That could be a nice way to do a little. <laughs> if students understood what you just talked about. Um, that could be a nice way to, uh, you know, get a quick opinion. You could make it anonymous, um, you know, and I was just looking at the results, so I don't know who answered what way, but you can purposely make it anonymous. Um, so that's a nice option, too. So, um, do, 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 that also gives Karen, I have a quick question. Sure, Kathy. Um, can we do the poll if we ha don't have the pro version of Zoom? I mean, can we do that with just the regular version? And um, Robin, who I see is on the call. Robin, do you know? Unclear. Let me Google. It. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and ask the second part. <laughs> okay. Um. In the past, I've looked at some of the instructions about how to change the background and this and that, and I don't ever see the menus or my screens. So where would we find these abilities? And do we have to be the Zoom owner to have the ability to create a poll? So there are a couple of questions there. Can a participant create the polls? Um, and can we change the backgrounds and do the polls and all those sorts of things um, if we're not on the pro version? So, yes, you can change backgrounds. Um, polling, it looks like you can do it on any level of account. I just put a link to the Zoom help um, down there and the 
Uh, requirements, it looks like, are just that the host user type must be licensed, which I think even if we have a basic account, it's technically licensed through VWU. But again, this would be a question for Robin more than me. I know she was going to play with basic yesterday and find out. Um, in terms of backgrounds, that's something fun you can do. Anyone can do this. Um, your students can do this. You can do this. So if you go down um, on your little bar at the bottom and you go next to video, right now it'll say stop video if you have your video going, there's a little arrow. And if you click that, it should give you the option to choose virtual background. Hmm. So now I'm on the beach in Corova. It's I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I, I missed it. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, um, where you, there's a little icon that looks like a video camera, um, right now if you just sort of hover over it, it says stop video. There's a little tiny arrow next to that pointing up. It's like a carrot. Um, you click that, uh, and then it should give you the option to choose virtual background. And then Zoom has some standard ones. Um, and in your settings, when you're not in a meeting, you can actually uh, choose more. I tend to use them not that much because, as you can see, it doesn't like curly hair. Um, so I end up very, very pixelated. <laughs> it doesn't know what to do with it. Um, <laughs> so I'm actually going to turn mine off just so you all don't have to deal with the eye craziness of that. Um, I, I thought some of the other people were in a more exotic place from where I am here in the office. Uh, I saw beach scenes and I saw, oh, well, yeah, they haven't come back yet. Zoom one and it actually moves, which is great. Um, Dear Joe Gonzalez Jackson used that one during our um, interviews for the Ed candidates. And they all said, oh, that's so relaxing. I'm going to focus on your background while I speak. Um, so another thing you can change is your name. Now this is a function you have to enable in your settings in Zoom, um, but you can allow participants to change their name. So if you go over your picture um, on the Zoom here, uh, and if you can't see yourself in the upper right hand corner, if you click on it, it should give you an option for gallery view, and then you should be able to see everybody on the call. And if you click speaker view, it's just who's ever talking or whoever doesn't have their mic muted. Um, but if you click on gallery view, you should be able to see all 19 of us. Um, and you click on, if you hover over yourself, it'll say mute or and there'll be three little dots. Um, and sorry, that's probably over here for y'all. Um, <laughs> and then you can see mute my audio, stop video, um, and you can see rename. So I'm going to go ahead and rename. Darren? Remind me where the settings link is here. So specifically for that, what you're going to do is hover over your own picture, Bill. And then there's three little dots in the right-hand corner, uh -huh. corner. And that's where you could rename. Okay. For the general settings, though, do we, is that, can we get to that? From when so we're the general settings are hard when you're in a meeting you didn't set up. Okay. But so, like, I use the Zoom app. Uh, and uh, so if I just open the Zoom app on my computer, I can change settings that way. You can also log in to, via the Zoom browser and change the settings uh, through your Zoom account on the Zoom browser. Okay. But yeah, if you just like click the link to go into a meeting, it's almost impossible to change your own settings. But if okay. you can do it. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Uh, the other thing you can do if you're the host that you can actually choose who's locked on screen. So let's say you have a student who's presenting. Um, I'm gonna pick on Bill since he is <laughs> the person who has been asking great questions. I can choose to spotlight his video. And so now he is actually locked in place <laughs> until I choose to unspotlight him, okay? Um, so that is certainly an option as well. Uh, I can choose to change it to spotlighting me. Um, so then I would be locked on this, or you could change it to spotlighting your screen share if you were sharing your screen. Um, so my church has actually been doing meetings over Zoom. 
Um, and we have been doing this. Um, so basically they spotlight who's ever speaking. So that way it doesn't have to just be one person speaking so we can have our worship associates still do our greeting. Then we can spotlight the minister later. We can spotlight our choir director. We can have a PowerPoint with things on screen. That's pretty fancy. You don't necessarily have to do it, uh, but it's certainly uh, something that you could do. And so now I'll cancel the spotlight and you should- What did you click on to uh, to spotlight? So you can't do it if you're not a host. Okay. Uh, but it would be the same three dots. Oh, okay. First thing you can do when you are a host, and again, this is a setting you have to turn on in Zoom, is you can choose to make someone a co-host. So let's say, again, you had a speaker, uh, a student who was speaking that day, and they're going to need to do some of the same stuff. Um, so let's say, again, Kathleen's just right below me, so I'm going to pick on her. Um, so I click on those three dots as the host. I can actually see an option to make her a co-host. Um, and so now she is a co-host, and she would be able to do a lot of those same functions. So she would be able to spotlight someone. Yep, exactly. And she would be able to do a lot of those same things. Um, and that, again, if you uh, have a student who's presenting or if you know you're doing something complicated, you have a student who's just really tech savvy, who's willing to help you, or if student groups are presenting, uh, that can be really helpful. So. All righty. Karen? Yeah. Can I just add something I learned from being on campus yesterday and playing around with things? For those of you who are going to be, um, for lack of a better word, streaming your class, if you have a student who's remote or multiple students who are remote and you need to hook up to the cameras that have been set up in the classrooms. When I went in yesterday, there were still no instructions. So I had to call the help desk and try to figure out how to switch from, because I was in Greer using my own laptop. I was trying to switch to that camera I think it'll automatically use that camera if you're in, say, Clark, where there's already a computer. But if you're using your own laptop, you have to go up. So if you move your um, cursor all the way up to the top of the top left of the screen to where it says meeting. Does everybody see that? There's a drop down menu that comes down. And like two thirds of the way down, it won't be highlighted if you're just using a regular computer without an additional camera plugged in but there's a thing that says switch camera. Does everybody see that? No? Did you click on meeting and see the drop down menu? Yes. Some people see it, some people don't. Um, what's under there for me under meeting is uh, Zoom and Meet Basics with um, Taryn's link. That's all I'm seeing right now. Oh, Taryn, did, am I still the co-host? Oh, you might be. Here, let me ex let me withdraw co-host. <laughs> Sounds so like final. Um, so yeah, you might be seeing things slightly differently. I know that you can do this again from your video. So where we looked at virtual backgrounds, that same little carrot arrow, you can choose which webcam you use. So like I have one on top of my docking station. Um, but I could also choose the one on my laptop. Um, I would not do that right now because my laptop is closed and you would just see blackness. <laughs> but it certainly, if I had them both going, I could choose it. Yeah. I've, I've never seen this carrot arrow you're talking about. I go down to the bottom and I see the record. I know how to record. Of course, I'm not in charge of that right now. But I see nothing else to, to do. Any oh, it is, um, there should be a little icon that looks like a video camera. Okay, gotcha. Just right next to that. All right. Yeah, it's teeny. <laughs> Got it. Other things that you can do um, is you all should have a raised ha raise hand option. Do you have that available? <laughs> Hopefully I set up the meeting properly. Um, where will we find it? I've seen it before and I don't think it's on here. Yeah, I must not have set it up right. So you can set it up in your settings so that there is a raise hand option. And then when students do that, uh, it actually on the list of participants will show who has their hand up with a little blue icon. It'll also show up on their uh, video. 
So I apologize that I didn't set that up so you all can't see it. Um, but uh, Taryn? Yeah. <clears throat> If you go to reactions, I'm seeing a hand icon and a thumbs up icon. Right, so that's the clapping and the thumbs up. Oh, okay. It's actually different. It's a little blue hand, so I just didn't set it up right. And this is, again, hiccups we're going to run into and stuff I'm going to have to figure out as we go. Um, so certainly things that uh, we can do. Other things you can do when you're the host um, is... You know, I don't think, I'm gonna like knock wood, cross my fingers here, that we'll have any problems with Zoom bombing because they have updated their security settings. Um, but heaven forbid someone logs in who isn't one of your students and starts doing things like drawing swastikas on your screen. This has happened to professors at other places. Um, when you are the host now, when you're on the list of participants, you can actually click on someone and remove them and report them. So you can actually kick that person out of your Zoom meeting. Um, again, hopefully not something any of us will run into. The other way to try to circumvent that is to set a password for your Zoom, which it allows you to do when you set up the meeting. It'll either auto-generate one or you can choose one. What is um, share screen? So share screen, where mm -hmm. you actually um, can share whatever you want on your computer. So I think I have it set up where any of you could do it right now. Um, so if someone has something they want to try to share, you can go ahead and share screen. And it'll let you choose whether you want to just do a document or you want to do your whole screen. So is that the same as present in Google Meet? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So Taryn, a question about sharing the screen. A couple of us were playing around with this the other day and we're trying to um, play videos out of our PowerPoints and such. And we could see the pictures, but we had trouble getting the audio to come through the Zoom. And then we went originally we went directly to the YouTube and still had a little bit of trouble getting the audio to come through Zoom. Is that just because we need more practice or is that sort of a, an issue? We this is a big thing, especially in or... Meet. In Meet, I had a really hard time just never could get it to work. Um, part of it is going to be your lag, right? Hey, yay, Ben. Um, <laughs> so part of it will be, you know, that it, we're going to have some lag, but then also some of it is you've got to like switch your audio settings to that tab. Um, so this is tough. Um, if anyone wants to try it now and see if they can make it work, feel free. Um, I have yet to do it and this is something that I should probably play around with, to be honest, in Zoom. I can never get it to work in Meet. We just showed the videos with closed captions. I don't know if this makes a difference, but I have MacBook Air and I was doing it yesterday with a friend and the video and the audio was perfect. Great. Oh, that's it was like the computer knew what to do. Yeah, I guess I'm just curious, like um, with video clips or if we want to take time and have everybody watch, you know, 15 minute TED talk together or something, what's the best way to do that? If if this audio thing is yeah, I mean, it may be something where you want to have them watch it outside of class as part of like the assigned readings essentially for that day um or it may be something that you can show and just know that for some students there will be a lag or it's not great well i guess yeah i mean but there are some things you know little short things that you want to talk about then you want to watch it then you want to talk about it mm -hmm. So, you know, always doing it outside of class is not optimal. I'm just trying right. to find what people's workarounds are for that. That's what I like to do too, Kathy. Maybe you could have the Zoom meeting set up where, where you have class for 20 minutes and then it stops and you do, ten, tell, and you do a 10 minute break and you tell the students go watch this video and then you have another Zoom link that starts the class up again to talk about it. Does that sound feasible? Yeah, that's definitely an option if it's not working. So I went ahead and shared my screen. Um, so you should actually see my YouTube channel now. 
<laughs> I'm an influencer. Not really. I have 11 whole subscribers. One of them is my personal account. Uh, <laughs> but this is just shows you, uh, this is pretty easy to set up. So all you have to do when you go to YouTube is just log in with your VWU account. Um, and like I said, I have one set up with my personal Gmail, but I didn't really want to associate like my old videos of dolphins with this. Uh, so <laughs> I created a separate one. Um, and so you can customize it just like sort of any other social media page. So I have a banner picture, I have my profile picture. And then here is where I have all kinds of videos that I've recorded. Some of them are for my online classes. Some of them are like uh, videos I made to walk people through things. Um, I have playlists for each class. So like here's my clinical psych class that I did in the fall or did in the spring. So all right so question could you all hear that um no 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 that's where i need to figure out how i get to the Yeah, I'm gonna Google it while we're chatting. <laughs> if anyone else has another question, this is a uh, I know. this is an embarrassing question. How my entire screen is filled up? I've been in other Zoom meetings, but where it seems that my entire screen maybe wasn't, but my entire screen is filled up with the uh, the Zoom page. How do I get out to my computer? Uh, back to my computer to share something, if that's the case. Where do I go? Okay, so this is a really good question. So if you are in the mode where it's just taking over your whole screen, up yes. in the upper right-hand corner, there should be a little thing that says exit full screen. Got it, thank you. Yep. Oh, I said it was an embarrassing question. Okay. No, that's okay, um, because it's tricky. And if someone else starts the meetings or screen shares, it like will lock you into that. Um, and it is annoying if you're trying to like prep something to share. See, this is critical because I knew that, <laughs> but in this meeting, I'd forgotten it. So when I'm in front of a class and I forget that, it's gonna be really embarrassing. Can you send that again? It's on the upper left hand where it's the upper right hand. A little box. Enter, enter full screen. So yep. you can enter full screen. That. And if you're in it, there'll be one that says exit full screen. And up next to that is where you can call your view. So you can choose to be speaker view, or whoever is talking will be full screen, or you can do gallery view. So um, it's good for you. Oh, go ahead, Ben. Sorry. Okay, so this is another dumb question that I'm sure all of you already know, but somehow I don't. Um, <laughs> Zoom is 40 minutes, right? With the basic account, yes. But your class is 60 or 75 or whatever. So what do you do? Stop it and start it again? That's what a lot of people did um, in the spring, is they just set up two links and then um, give students a five minute break in between, especially if you have one of the 75 minute classes. Um, the other option is to use Google Meet, which is the basic account you can go as long as you need to. Are you gonna show us how to use Google Meet? Mm -hmm. Yep. I okay, can. good. Google then Google then Google. I know how to, I'm comfortable with, fairly comfortable on learning with Zoom. Um, the other question to add on to that, I have a kind of like a business Zoom account. Mm -hmm and that has unlimited time, can I use it? I would go for it. <laughs> All right. That's what I need to know. Yeah. All right, um, now I guess, okay, you're gonna show us uh, Google Meets. But I yeah. thought Robin well, said there was a problem with using your personal account. I thought Robin pointed out that there were some problems, uh, might be some problems using your personal account and connectivity with students you could do. Yeah, Robin said that you will not be in the same domain. So all the students who have um, the Google accounts are not automatically um, set there. And there are other things, but you'll be outside of the domain, yes. That's what she yeah. said. Yeah, I mean, so it depends on what you want to do, right? So like I have done cocktail hours with friends who are clearly not on the VWU account, right? Um, and they've been able to get in just fine. Um, 
you know, but if you want, I feel like it would work. It would just be a matter of how it links, but I've been in Google meetings off and on all summer. I attended two conferences, one international, one national, entirely on Zoom this summer um, and had no problem getting into um, things that other people set up and, be, and being able to participate in everything. So Ben, I think it should be fine to use your unlimited account. I have a, I have a weekly meeting with some people that, anywhere from um, eight to 12 and they're all over the country and that I initiate and it hasn't been a problem so I don't know why a student wouldn't be able to get in but yeah, but I there might be some other things that I don't know about that you know would not allow me to do that but it just seems like instead of stopping and starting it's nice to when you have them stay there exactly yeah if, if anyone from Wesleyan has a Wesleyan pro account you again also won't have mm -hmm. that problem so I have one of the pro accounts because years ago when we first got our zoom accounts John Aird sent me up with one, so you know this is a while ago because he was still working here. Um, there were some things I needed to do professionally, um, and then I've actually used it a lot for online course prep. Um, you could do it in Meet too, but um, I do video over PowerPoint. So basically, I just go, set up a meeting with just me, <laughs> and then I talk over my PowerPoint while I screen share and record it, like we're recording this, and then that's how I get my videos. Um, so, and, but you can do that with basic, especially since a lot of your videos are going to be shorter, right? So that's another option. Okay, I have figured out the sound, and so I'm going to screen share and do it correctly this time. All right, so when you screen share, and I'll show you the web page where I found this um, after I do it myself. When you go into screen share, it will give you lots of options. Like, do you want to share your whole screen? Do you want to share just, you know, something you have open, like your PowerPoint? Um, and at the bottom of that pop-up window, there is an option that says share computer sound. And there's an option next to it that says optimize screen for video clip. So that's another thing you can do. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to share computer sound right now. And here is that. And let's go back. Um, so I have a PowerPoint we'll just refer to, and then we'll go over the case study. And then I will direct you to uh, what you need to know uh, in terms of which videos to watch. So, so could you hear me that time? Yes. yes. Woo, it works. All right. Yes, but your voice is enhanced in some way. It's a little different. <laughs> it's like. Yeah. Yes. Do you mind if I ask if you repeat um, the instructions you just gave us where you went? It was. Yes, I'm actually here. just going to share the link on how you do that. Okay. Um, and it was optimized screen video? I did just the uh, share computer sound. But yeah, if I were going to show, for example, in okay. January term, I'm teaching psych and film. And so I'm trying to figure out if they could just stream all the movies. But were I to want to just do a movie over Zoom, I would do the optimized full screen for me. Okay. And Bill just shared his desktop. There you go. So Taryn, for, for folks to uh, share their, their desktop, um, they don't need permission from the host or can you set it up such that it, it so will that only happen? Yeah, you can set it up so they need permission. Um, and so right now I have my account set up so anyone can share. Um, if that became a problem, it's an easy setting before the next meeting. Actually, I think you might be able to do it while you're in a meeting if you're the host. Um, but yeah, you know, I have students all the time be like, oh, I just found this video. Can we watch it? And so, um, you know, I have it so that they could pop it up there so I don't have to YouTube it. But you can definitely set it up so only you can screen share. And you can also, as the host, uh, assign someone to record. Um, so right now I have it set up so none of you could record. Um, but I can record. But if I uh, am the host, I can actually set it up so I could say, okay, this person, so let's say you had someone who had accommodations, you could let them record to their computer. And, and I, the, am I still sharing my screen? You are. I see it. 
Yeah. Because I, I jumped out of Zoom and Good. now I have all of your. Okay, thank you. Power, so I can stop your sharing. <laughs> the um, Karen, before we go to Google Meet, would you um, kind of walk us through the Zoom breakout session? Yes. I mean, yes. I think uh, Joyce's presentation was excellent, and we got to try it hands on. But I don't think I still know how to do it, set it up myself. Yeah, and this is something, um, let me actually send you all in the chat these two links. Um, so to be perfectly honest, as I said, I've done a lot of conferences and other things this summer, meetings over Zoom. And even though I had been in the hangouts or the uh, breakout rooms a lot, um, I still didn't know how to do it myself. Uh, so I just used Zoom support. And so uh, I gave you the two links for that. Those are also in the Google Doc I shared earlier at the last page of that is just a list of uh, resources. Um, and so if you go to that, it will, uh, there are videos that can walk you through how to do everything. So that's how I've been teaching myself some of this stuff. Um, their YouTube channel is really, really helpful actually, um, because it's not just one person doing things. They get like other employees that zoom on the videos and show you what it's like with actual people in there, which is really helpful. Um, but I will try to walk you through how to do breakout rooms without you all being able to see it. <laughs> because again, I can't show you zoom while I'm the host. It's really bizarre. I wish you could. Will the chat be on uh, Google Docs? Yeah, yeah, the chat will save since I'm, well, I would just save automatically. Yeah, and I will definitely share it with everybody. Okay. All right, so because I'm the host and because I have the setting turned on, I have an icon at the bottom that says breakout rooms. So when you're the host, this will turn on. And actually, let me see if I can find the thing I used before that I can put in the chat for you. I'll do, and the nice thing is when you go to Zoom's help center, they usually have the associated video right there, which is really nice. So that link will walk you through how to do this. But um, if you have the, uh, the setting turned on to do breakout rooms and the link I just sent will tell you how to do that, then you have a little icon down on your bar where your video camera and your record and all that stuff is uh, that looks like four little boxes and it says breakout rooms underneath it. So you click that um, and you can do, it gives you a couple options. So you can automatically do it and then it'll randomly put people into rooms or you can manually do it. So like if I were to click manually, then I would hand assign each of you to be in a group. So like if you had student groups for a project that were already assigned, you could say, okay, I'm gonna put this group here, this group there. And that does take a couple minutes. Um, but what I've heard other people say is that they'll have students like answering each other's questions or chatting about something while they do it and it works out pretty well. You then get to decide how many rooms you want. Um, so like right now there are 16 of you plus here. So it would make sense to me. Um, my husband was a math major, you know, basic math. Let's put four people in a room. Okay. And if I choose automatic, then it will just randomly assign you to a room. Before I do that, um, let me just explain what happens then. You'll get a pop up on your screen that'll basically said like the host is inviting you to join a room. Um, click it and you'll go into a room. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll bring you all back in a minute or two so we can talk about what that process was like. All right, so now I'm going to open all rooms.
the main session. <laughs> you know what? If I teach in my classroom, I gotta do something with this background. It will just sow chaos among students. <laughs> well, that's why you can uh, use a virtual background. I don't think you'd have the same hair problem I would. <laughs> Aaron? I got a beard problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, your neck should kind of hold that in for you. Someone was asking mm -hmm. a question, sorry. <laughs> Taryn? Yeah? Would you please go through the steps to set up the individual groups one more time? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and I actually took a screenshot while y'all were in the room so I can show you what it looks like when you're by yourself. <laughs> Just sort of hanging out. <laughs> All right. Um, back. Um, back. Good job. <laughs> Taryn, we had a question um, uh, in the breakout room. Um, are you, uh, do we all have um, the ability to um, do things that um, doesn't require a host? I'm not sure she did. Yes, yes. She could have. You can chat did. with each other. You can share screen while you're in there. Uh, the only difference is whatever chat you write while you're in a group doesn't go on to the full chat. So um, I wouldn't see it, for example. But but what, if, what if we use the whiteboard? Yeah, that? That? I think so. Then when we come back in the larger group, we can share that whiteboard. Yeah, if you sort of, I think you just sort of save it as a picture to your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be a great way actually to have students do some of this brainstorming. Karen, can you also open up a Google Doc? Like anyone in the group could open up a Google Doc, share their screen so they could be taking notes. You have somebody who's described. Right. Yeah, and in fact, we did that. Uh, one of the conferences I attended, the International Conference on Eating Disorders earlier in the year, we did that where we had a Google Doc that the um, session chairs assigned us to work on. And um, we could also see the other groups working. Um, and it was really cool because we had someone in Australia, someone in Brazil, me, and we were all collaborating and talking to each other. So um, on a Google Doc? Yep, you can use a Google Doc. You can use anything you would normally use. Which is yeah. a I think that uh, uh, Elizabeth, Larry, and I decided yesterday in the uh, theater, good theater, that we would create Google Sheets for uh, mm -hmm. some of the things we were used for breakouts and then the other day in Joyce's meeting we talked about some sticky note option yeah. and we use those board. in yeah Jamboard jam board. through Google yep and that's something else you can use as well you down that's not on our uh, on our computer though on the Google drop down it's menu on, is it it's, it's online so basically you can access it through your pardon? online is it I, I didn't hear you oh it's a Google app just like um gmail is a google app google drive is a google app um so you can just use it with your vwu account through your browser you have to go to that okay. upper right corner when you're checking your email and there's all those dots you can click on to bring up like calendar and all these other if you're scrolling way yeah. way down jamboard's at the bottom oh so it is yeah. up there good thank yeah. you I am going to throw a link for Jamboard for you all in the chat. Wow, that was ugly, sorry. <laughs> I should have done a URL. <laughs> well, Taryn, um, when, uh, when you separate the students in groups, uh, how does the recording look the Recording looks like? Uh, well, do you have a record of what they do separately? I haven't done it before, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll after this. <laughs> what do you um, think? Joyce was able to do was she popped into each of the rooms and kind of like listen for a minute to the students. She was able to answer any questions. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I can, um, I'll share my screen right now and kind of show you that. Yeah. I'm sure you need a pro account to do that though, right? I think as long as you're doing breakout rooms, you can do it. But again, uh, this is a question for Robin. I get, I've had my pro account for like probably six or eight years now. So it's okay. a long time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or at least you, you probably have to be the host. To pop around the room. Be the host to do that. Students can't do that. Yeah. The host has that power. Okay, so this actually uh, shows you what I saw while you guys were in breakout rooms. It was just me hanging out in the main room by myself. Um, <laughs> but you can see right here where it says join. 
So I would have been able to join any of your groups. I chose not to do it since we were just doing a short one. Okay. When you, I hopefully you saw my little messages pop up at the top. Uh, that's where I broadcast a message to all, and you can just type whatever you want in there. Um, and then were I to click on someone, I can't right now because this is just a screenshot, but it actually gives me the option to move them. So for example, I mentioned how my church is on Zoom, but we've actually been doing a coffee hour on Zoom as well, using the breakout rooms. Um, and if there's a breakout room where everyone's left but one or two people, uh, the host will just move us and collapse the rooms essentially so that we can keep chatting with folks. Um, so that's an option. Um, hey, Taryn, did those breakout rooms record along with um, the normal lecture? And I don't know. <laughs> so I will find out when I process this video. I don't actually know. Um, I'm sure that's a, a, a Google Zoom question that we could do pretty easily. So, but uh, I did not. Taryn, was that a reminder that we got that we had 60 seconds left? Was that automatic? That's automatic, yeah. So when you go to close it, um, it automatically gives everybody 60 seconds to basically finish up what they were talking about. Um, and then it either automatically brings you back or you, as you saw with your pop-up, you can choose to go back to the main room. Okay, so you can tell the students you have 20 minutes. Exactly. And they can kind of keep track, but they only get the reminder at like 19 or whatever. Exactly. And you can, you know, but you can, with those broadcast a message, you can be like, okay, you've got five minutes left. Right, right, okay paying attention to see it but hopefully they are right because yes. right now you're way over on the side of my screen so i end up looking like i'm like this oh, there we go <laughs> can you preset the time for those rooms so in 20 minutes they're going to be uh it's going to call the students back or do you have to sort of monitor that yourself that's a legit question i didn't well, you know, there are options. Um, so let me try to look real quick while we're chatting. Um, I know Joyce said it for 20 yeah. minutes. And then yeah, I think Joyce said it for time. Yep. Okay. So you can, um, oh, you can move participants into break rooms, breakout rooms automatically. Um, you can set how long you want the breakout rooms to close automatically after. It looks like the default's 30 minutes, but you can change that. Um, and then you can count down to closing after breakout room. You can set that too. So you can say, I want it to be two minutes instead of 60 seconds. Mm, okay. So those are all options. And okay, thanks. Is, is it saved those random groups? So if you all worked on something, we came back together, I could then re put you in your same room and so you could keep going with the same people. I have another question about our breakout sessions. If, can I import? images or documents in there like if i wanted each group to analyze and comment on a different paragraph could that be put into the breakout room or a different image so you could certainly um go into the chat or like go into each great breakout room and mm -hmm. um, then uh you know put a link in the chat um there is a way that you can share a file. Um, so I think I have this enabled where any of you could do it right now. So if you look at the chat, uh, which right now you might get as a pop-up depending on what mode you're in, or it might be on the right side of your screen. Um, there's an option that says file, and then you can choose where you grab it from. Mm. And so uh, let me get something that's not gonna violate FERPA. Uh, <laughs> You all can have my intro syllabus. There you go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's another way you could do it is then you could just pop into each breakout room and um, send them a different document. Okay. But all that's right. another setting you need to enable in Zoom settings. You could okay. probably also like pre-prepare a Google Doc that just says like group one image, group two image, and just share the whole thing. Oh, good idea. Good idea. Thank you too. Thank you. These are both good. Yeah, and you can also, um, you know, I've just been sending you all the links to Google Docs, but you can also specifically pick a Google Doc to share um, like you do in your email too when, it, when you go there. And if you have Dropbox, you can do that as an option as well. And that uh, Jamboard is a free app that we can download 
through Google, Google Mail. We don't have to pay for Jamboard, correct? No, it, we can do it through our, so let me open my VWU email real quick for you all. Because Kelly was asking that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just click on these dots, Jamboard should be right. somewhere over here. Yeah, scroll, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. So then you would do that. Ta-da! And here's the one we did during Choices thing. <laughs> Do you have to link that to the Zoom in any way, or is Zoom, is it smart enough to, to link itself all together? Figure stuff out. So like if I wanted to share, uh, you know, Joyce's document with you all, um, I would just put it in the chat. The chat becomes a really nice place to share things. One thing to note, though, is that we were all able to see all the other groups work <laughs> in Jamboard. So if you don't, if you want the students sort of working, right, exactly. So they could just scroll through and see what the other groups did in Jamboard. I don't think there's a way to stop that. Different Jamboard for each group, honestly. Yeah. And okay. that's what they did in the one conference session I was in is like, okay, group one, here's your Google Doc. Group two, here's your Google Doc. How do you get that to chat? Do you just drag it? I just copied the link and pasted it. Oh, copy and paste. I wonder if you can try it too. Huh. All right. Again, trying to not violate FERPA. Close my email for y'all. Um, any other questions about Zoom before we switch over to Meet? Um, one real quick one. When the students are in their breakout groups, can they share screen, their own screens with each other? Mm -hmm. Yep, as long as you have that enabled that anyone can share, they should be able to. Okay, thank you. Yep, they can share. Um, and actually, uh, Joyce had us do this in the session, right? They can do the remote control thing and whatnot as well. So uh, there's lots of options of what they can do. Yeah, breakout rooms work really well. And in fact, I honestly think this semester, breakout rooms are gonna work better than group work in person. They don't have to yell from six feet away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're doing Flex 50 or Flex 100 might even be better. It might be nice to do your group work on your virtual day. Alrighty, so the nice thing with Google Meet is I will be able to show you all a lot of this um, once I'm sharing my screen because <laughs> it's not part of Zoom. So let me get there uh, real quick. And again, close my email. And you can get to meet from the same place in your email, those dots in the upper right hand corner. Um, you can also just, while you're logged into your VWU account, Google, Google Hangouts Meet, uh, and it will just go. And then you, if you have more than one uh, Google account, it'll just ask you to choose which one you want to use. So I'm going to sure. go ahead and share my screen here. Sorry, I was also reading the chat simultaneously. That's the other thing that happens when you are the host of this, is you have to sort of cognitively be aware of a lot of things. And especially now that I'm not just on my little laptop screen and I'm using two monitors, I'm like, oh, wait, I need to look here. So it, it'll keep us on our toes. <laughs> All right, um, so here is what the initial window looks like uh, for Google Meet. You can join or start a meeting. Um, and so then you could, you know, start a meeting, uh, you could schedule a meeting. Um, so this is how I typically do it. So, um, you can essentially just do it through your calendar. And actually when you're, once you're set up with your Zoom account, you can set up your Google calendar so that it will do this as well. So again, let me go to my calendar um, and you can see here's everything all the fun stuff we all have coming up um, so let's say i wanted to make a meeting for later today okay so i can tell it to add google meet conferencing when i go to set that meeting up um, and it will just so let's say i say sample meeting okay and I want it to be from two to three, add Google Meet conferencing, it will just give me a link right away. 
And I uh, have Taryn, uh, uh, where, where did you get this window from that, that you're using to schedule a meeting? I'm just in my Google Calendar. Okay, but, but I, and I understand the calendar, but where, where, did, this, where did this window come from? Um, so all I did is um, click on wherever I want to schedule, whatever time I want to schedule. Okay. So I to schedule it oh, okay, and then the window pops up. And the pops up. And gotcha, so, thanks. Okay. You know, so, yep, so you can, again, sample meeting. Um, and then I have the Zoom integrated um, setting. And again, I don't remember how I did this because I did it a while ago. But if you look on Zoom's help or just Google, how do I get Zoom to talk to Google Calendar? instruction should come up um, and so I could make it a zoom meeting if I wanted to so if I did that then it just automatically creates a zoom link for me great thing and Kelly said this in the chat earlier is let's say I wanted to make this my class and I know my class is gonna happen every Tuesday Thursday all I have to do is my normal editing here where I tell it oh I'm gonna have it custom repeat every Tuesday and Thursday, um, and I'll have it end on whatever the end of the semester is. I think it's the third. And then it just populates my calendar. And if you want it, you could share that with students as like a Google Calendar invite. Um, or what I've done is I've just put my links on Blackboard, and then I also sent them to all my students in an email yesterday, and they're also on the syllabus, so no one can say they don't have the link. <laughs> so how did you post uh, the meeting notification to Blackboard again? Okay, so what I do um, is I just highlight this information. Okay. And I include the phone ones too, because I did have students in the spring who had to call in. I just copy it, control C, open Apple C, um, and then let me pop in the blackboard real quick. And let's say I wanted to put it in this class as an announcement, you could do it as an announcement, you could, you know, choose it over here, just create announcement, and then control V. And paste it in. Okay, fantastic. Yep, and here you can see how I have it posted for them. So they have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's thank you. Ethics and professional issues one, please. <laughs> All right. so I'm going to delete this one because I don't actually need it. <laughs> I'll be confused as to why I have something at two every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, but that's really helpful with Meet. Um, Meet has a lot of the same functionalities as Zoom. Again, the breakout rooms, as Bill was saying, are clunky with the third-party app. Um, but the really nice thing about Meet is pretty much everything is the same. I don't know if it will let me start a meeting while I'm using the camera. So I'm going to give it a whirl. <laughs> it looks like yes. So it's not going to have me uh, use my camera, but that's okay because you all can see me over there. Um, and so here's the cool thing. Let's say you're chatting with some colleagues, you know, uh, or you're texting with someone and you're like, man, I'd really like if we could all just talk right now. You can just do this. Start a meeting and then it gives you the link. And you can just send this, you know, email it to people and they can just join you. Um, so I had a student yesterday, all of my students, I'm actually requiring to set up a Zoom or Hangouts meeting with me within the first couple weeks of the semester so they know how to come to office hours. Um, and I had a student yesterday who I blanked and missed the meeting and she emailed me and was like, where are you? And I was like, I'm really sorry. Here's the link. I'm on right now. And she was able to jump right on. Um, so I think students are going to be understanding about us this semester, which is really nice. Uh, but if I wanted you all to join, I'm not just so all our campus don't get confused, but I could send you this link. So when I'm in Meet, um, I am able to, as being said, uh, present now is the same as screen share in Zoom. And so you can choose, do I want to present my entire screen? Do I want to just present a window or do I want to just present a tab in Chrome? Like if you already have what you want to share open, uh, you could do that there. Um, so 
Let's say I want to show you all, you know, how to do the polls in Zoom. I could just share that. And it says, you're presenting to everybody. Click here to return to the video call when you're ready to stop presenting. So then I do that and I would go back. Now, the annoying thing to me <laughs> about Meet and why I'm going to try to use Zoom um, is that when you're screen sharing, it doesn't show you everybody. It just shows you what you're screen sharing. Now, Stephen Hawk has some hacks where he plays around with his video, with his screens, and makes it so you can see people. Uh, but I just find Zoom so much easier for that because I don't know about you all, but I need that feedback. I need the student nods, right? Um, and so I find it really helpful for that purpose to be able to see you all when I'm presenting and be able to do something like say, hey, can you all actually hear this video? And I just see you all nodding, right? Um, so that is certainly something there. But there are advantages to, to uh, Google Meet. So if I turn on captions, um, it's automatic. And so it will just automatically populate them. I think it's having a hard time figuring stuff out. There we go. Uh, because I'm using my microphone for a couple different things right now. Uh, but it will automatically do the captions. And it's not perfect, but it's one of the better closed captioning systems I've seen, to be honest. Um, so that's really nice. Um, you have a lot of the same functionality in terms of chat. Um, so you can chat with people here. Um, there's no raise hand option, but to be honest, even with the raise hand option enabled in Zoom, I find it easier to just have students write in the chat when they have something to say, like uh, me. <laughs> That's what we did in my class in the spring. And it just was sort of a system we figured out on the fly and made it work. Um, another thing I figured out with Zoom, with Meet rather, is that even more than um, Zoom, there's a lot of echo and there's a lot of feedback. Um, so when you're in Meet, I highly recommend you have everyone mute who's not talking. Uh, and that's why this like call me or, you know, me next becomes so important because um, it just, it's, you can't understand anything. <laughs> and I think we had this happen on a recent Meet um, where people were like, <laughs> just echoes all around, right? Um, so with Zoom, sometimes that will get annoying, but it's not as bad. It's like me, it's incomprehensible if everyone's not muted, who's not talking. Um, so that's one thing I highly recommend on me. All right, questions about me. Can you do the polling like you did with Zoom? No, but hack for that <laughs> is that you can just do a Google form and then share the link in the chat. So uh, were I to just go to my Google Drive, I can tell it, hey, I want to make a Google form. And then I could fill this out, uh, create my multiple choice questions, uh, and then share the link for that in the chat. And so it okay. would quite as pretty, but it would work the same way. Okay, so just to be clear, um, we can't use the Google, I'm not Google, the uh, Zoom uh, questions or, or whatever, I can't remember what you call it, but um, yeah. So what call. you did when you started out the uh, survey, we can't use that because we're not, we don't have the I'm not sure when I Googled it, it looked like anybody can use it, but I'm not positive. Okay, good, good. Yeah. That'd be nice if we could. Yeah. Um, and then let me just show you real quick, again, sort of how this would look. So if you had done a Google form, this is an old one we did to see who needed to take our capstone research project when. Um, this is how Google creates that for you. And it does this again sort of automatically as people answer things. So you could still share the results with them in the same way. So it's not integrated, but it's certainly something you could do. And honestly, if you didn't like the Zoom polling, you could do this in Zoom too. If you prefer Google Forms, you're used to Google Forms. 
or any other system. So I know that some people have used Kahoot through Zoom, um, which is like a sort of gamified polling um, that you can do. Really anything that you would put up on the screen in class, you can screen share when you're in Zoom or Meet. So that's another option. So um, Taryn, you said after you create a Google form, um, you then simply send the students the link to take it. So does that, then, this is really a basic question. Does that mean you just copy and paste the link? Yep. <laughs> into, into what? Um, I always just use the chat, but you could also- Into the chat, okay. For class, you could put it on Blackboard, send it in an email, something like that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Karen, I have a question uh, that I've been thinking a lot about. When you have to multitask in the classroom teaching, I've never done it. Um, and can you have one laptop and the school computer and then log in at the same time in both computers in the same link with the same account so that you can have the laptop working only for Zoom and you can do all your teaching and all the stuff that you do in the computer. Is that possible? You need to be able to do that. You just want to really make sure you mute one of them. Otherwise, you're going to get some crazy feedback. Um, what, what do you uh, mute? Um, yeah, so just if you look at your uh, Zoom bar down at the bottom, uh, the little microphone, you would want that muted on one of the two. Yeah, but what, why? Because there's a lot of interference. Because if you have two that are doing the exact same thing right next to each other, it just creates like a really Actually, we had this problem earlier in the summer where my husband did a reading for church and he was even in the other room, but I was watching it on my computer. And so I actually had to mute my computer because we were getting feedback even from the other room where he was echoing. So. Oh, but you were not linked through the same account, were you? I don't know if you can do the same account. Um, you might need to log into one with like a personal account, but as long as you have the link, it should be okay. Basically what you would do is you would choose one to be the host, and then when you would just go in to the link as if you were a student. Okay. Yeah, because um, even when you're teaching at home through at least, uh, I did Google, and you, you click here for to show a document, you click there to show uh, the website, and then I click them away. I mean, I, <laughs> when you're doing so many things, you do things you didn't want to do, and it's very difficult in, this, in one computer to do all this clicking. And that was one of the problems teaching uh, and showing things in here. Definitely. As you're doing right now, yes. I agree. <laughs> Again, this is my first time trying to share things on different screens, and so that's been fun. Yeah, it's it's exciting. So thank you all for helping me practice too. <laughs> the other things that you can do on Meet that are similar to Zoom is you can record the meeting. Like we talked about at the beginning, it will save automatically to your Google Drive, um, so that's pretty easy. Um, and then you can share that pretty easily with students or other folks. Um, you can change the layout. It's not going to look different because I'm the only one in this meeting, but you can like change just like with Zoom how you see the other people on the screen. Um, another thing Google Meet versus Zoom is that I believe Google Meet will max out at either 12 or 16 people on the screen, whereas Zoom will do a lot more. Um, so if you have a larger class, again, like Zoom might be a better option if you want to be able to see them all at once. Um, I can just turn off the captions here if I want. Um, and there are various settings here as well in terms of what video and audio equipment you're telling it to use. Yeah. Also, I wonder if there's a difference when you invite them because when you put the link in Blackboard, they all join in. But when you put the list in your calendar, when you list every single one, it appears in their calendar as an invitation, doesn't it? Yes, yes. So it appears as a reminder for right. them. That, so like I did for this meeting, right? I sent you all an email, but then I also did an invite. Um, and <clears throat> that was easier for me because I just had to send it to faculty, right? Um, but certainly uh, it's something that you could, and the nice thing again, if you set it up recurring, you only have to send it to them once. You only have to find all their emails once. 
mm -hmm. that, again, might be a nice option. Okay. Mine set up recurring in my calendar, just so I remember. <laughs> okay. With these two choices, is, is there one that the majority of faculty are gravitating towards or more, or more faculty using Zoom than Google? You know, Google? I don't actually know um, because we've had such a small sample of, you know, pretty much similar people signing on to all of these that I don't know what the wider faculty is doing at all, to be honest. Um, I know a lot of people chose Meet because of not the 40 minute thing, but then I know other people just started another Zoom in spring. Um, so I don't actually, that would be an interesting poll. To do and, and do we know if, if students have a particular preference or if they tend to use one or the other? No, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm sure someone's doing that research out there somewhere, um, but I don't actually know. And whatever happened to Skype? Did somebody else buy out Skype and is it rolled into? Skype? Is it IBM or Microsoft bought it? No? Frank knows. <laughs> but it, don't you have to pay for Skype? I mean, I used to have Skype and use it a lot. But you have to have an account and you ha and, and it's not free. And I, think, I think for Skype, it's harder to do the screen sharing and things like that, too. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know there's also one called Microsoft Teams. Um, I've never used it, but again, uh, similar functionality. So mm -hmm. I'm up screen sharing just so you all can stop just staring at my bubble moving. Um, I'm planning to, uh, depending on what I'm doing a certain day in a class, to use both use Meet on some days and use Zoom on others for other class periods. Does anybody see a problem with that? I mean, I think as long as I communicate to the students, you know, this week it's on your, Zoom. What would be your reasoning for doing that? Uh, depending on what I want to do in class, uh, like for especially the breakout sessions which seem right now to only be possible in Zoom, although Cathal is working on an instruction sheet. I think that's what I heard last week for us to be able to do breakout sessions and meet. I have heard that uh, Google is working on that now and may have a functional breakout option by the end of September. That's just oh, a rumor. Okay. Yeah, Google is constantly updating Meet because they really want to compete with Zoom. So they already have fixed some of the things that I know I had issues with in the spring. But Meet doesn't have, the video isn't as good on Meet as it is on Zoom, right? That it I don't think so. Out. I mean, it certainly is enough so you can see people, but it, it's more pixelated than Zoom is. Like I see all of you pretty clearly right now, and on Meet it's not quite as clear. Mm -hmm. So if you're a very visual person, I would consider Zoom for that reason. If you're going to care less, Meet will work. And again, if you have a student with hearing impairment, Meet is the way to go because of those automatic closed captioning. We don't have a partnership with any kind of closed captioning service for Zoom right now. And as you all know, there's not really money lying around to do that, so. My guess is that uh, last spring, our students got to be uh, pretty good at doing both. If they were here, they did some of uh, each probably. And if they were still in high school, they probably did quite a bit of uh, Zooming and Google meeting. And they have their own organizations and teams that have been using these uh, platforms. So I have a feeling they're a lot better at it than I am right now. Probably, yeah. I mean, my students definitely helped me with some things <laughs> as we went through. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they'll be savvier than you are. And I just, I'm honest with them. I know other people are really worried about like being professional and like, I'm like, whatever. Like the other day when we were on Joyce's thing, my cat was walking on the railing. Like he's gonna do that sometime. I had to clean a spot off my desk because he wants to lay there, right? Like he's gonna be on screen sometimes. And they all know the reality. Like there's actually, um, I should show, it's just as a funny thing. There's a great video. Um, some of you may have already seen it on social media. 
of a guy who is making fun of the Chronicle article about how you should curate your Zoom space. And he's like, oh, we should make it look like a half of the office. So we need to have like half a ream of paper and some books lying around and the box from your iPad that you'll keep for the duration of the life of <laughs> the equipment. So I'll try to find that while we're chatting and share it just for some levity. <laughs> Other questions anyone has? Anyone just want to like scream into the void? Yeah, can I just try to sh share um, a PowerPoint from my Blackboard? Right. Okay, so I go to um, I'm just how to, how to I go to share screen. Yep. First. Okay, and then. Um, all screen is that it if you can choose do you want to share your whole screen do you want to share just the powerpoint there's a whiteboard option okay and then to get to my powerpoint is open so i just go to i go to the dots on the other side uh, so now you would just do it like you would if you were the only one at your computer so however you'd normally pull up your powerpoint you pull it up Okay, so I just go to what I already had open, and I would go to that. Is it coming up? Yeah, looks like you might have to click it down at the bottom. Looks like it's opening. opening okay there you go. okay so that worked yeah that okay was now let me okay to close this I just close it if I just want to okay if I want to go to another one let me just see if this will work okay and I'm talking with Stella Payne to me at California State University at Fullerton. Okay, when I tried to do that in the classroom, it wouldn't, the videos oh, no, wouldn't sorry. work, but they do work here. So if I'm doing it from home, these work because I made these on my own computer, but I couldn't do it from oh. the classroom. So maybe I should just go remote and get everything from. Well, and you know, you can bring your, if you have a laptop, you can bring that into the classroom. Yeah, I mean, it honestly might be the fact that I think those computers in the classroom are like, probably so, actually that you know, I'm be. wondering, Taryn, uh, you know, the, the problem you had initially when you were trying to share a video um, and we weren't getting any sound, you made adjustments as the host. And I wonder if that impacted Kathy's ability to have. Yeah, because she did first time, which was great. Kathy, you actually have the option of embedding your video into the PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm and not sure you, what I did, but they, 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 aren't, they don't work everywhere. Well, the, if you embed into the PowerPoint, it's part of the PowerPoint. If you don't, then it will search for whatever the source is. The, the disadvantage of doing that is that if it's embedded, your file becomes extremely large. Can you so your PowerPoint might become very difficult to open at other points. So what was your recommendation to do instead of embedding it? Forgive me, was the question, what's the recommendation to do with that? Yeah, instead of embedding it so that the file doesn't get so large? What well, you could use your laptop. That would mean you'd need to bring that computer and okay. to make sure that you have the ability to go into use the options to be able to access it. And that's problematic in its own way. So, so are people then like having to bring in a laptop and using the computer in the classroom both for different things? 
at the same time. My, int my intention is to bring my laptop and to use my laptop in the classroom. Yeah, and if you're teaching in some place like Greer, you have to do that anyway. There's yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, the equipment and blocker where I will generally be teaching is so old that uh, when John Aird was here, he generally had to come upstairs every class and make some adjustments to make it work. So I'm just going to bring my uh, laptop, I think, uh, and uh, plug it into the uh, into the projector and skip the, the ancient equipment we have. If I did my PowerPoints on my new home desktop, if I just copy those onto my laptop, it should work? Mm -hmm. Yes. Classroom? Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, Frankie. Hey, don't you have your PowerPoints in Google Drive stream, which means you can access them anywhere you are on the planet? No, I just I just save them. I never can find things in the cloud. I just save. <laughs> well, them. it's not in the cloud. It's in it's in our Google File Drive stream where I thought we were supposed to put everything now instead of on the uh, on the H drive. So you don't have to go. I can't find things in the cloud either. But all my documents, <laughs> when I open up my screen, uh, I've got the documents folder, and I've got a Google File Drive stream folder, which will open up my current documents. So I just click on Google File Drive stream first, and I put everything in there. And then wherever I am in the world, I just open my computer, I click on that, and all my files are there. So you don't need to save it to different computers that way. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I, I mean, I, I did everything on my home desktop, not my laptop. Well, your home, okay. But your home desktop, you can have the Google File Drive stream on there as well and access. It, it, made, it made a big difference for me when we went to that system because I was copying things uh, here at my office at home, saving it there. Now I just save it in one place and I, I could access it in Africa in March. It's all the same stuff. I, I need to learn how to do that. Yeah, pretty straightforward. It's easier than anything that we've talked about today. Okay. <laughs> um, if you're doing it as a PowerPoint, I would save it as a PowerPoint. Um, just because if you save it as a Google, whatever it's called, Google Slides, it could mess with the formatting. Yeah, well, what about things that end up as Google Slides and you didn't put them in as Google Slides? Like, how, how does that, like, if I just sent a PowerPoint as an attachment and then I tried to open up, it, it opens up in, in Google Slides, not in PowerPoint. You can download that attachment and then it would open in PowerPoint? Okay. Question. Yeah, the Google, uh, the Google file drive stream is easy to use. I've never figured out how to use Google Docs and such because stuff goes in there that I don't want in there. Stuff that I uh, want to put in there ends up someplace else. Uh, and it's not completely manageable for me. Although I'm going to use in uh, the honors class this year. Uh, the Google Slides for group work, same as uh, Jamboard in, in a little different way. Robin said that some students can't access PowerPoint from home. Yes, so you have to have a license for PowerPoint for anything in the Microsoft suite. Um, so if they don't have that, they can't access it. There are some free hacks. They're not great. Um, my husband used one for a while, but that's another advantage of using the Google Slides is that they can access it wherever. Okay. Hmm. So as we're seeing, um, students are going to have a lot of the same type of questions we do. So one thing to anticipate this semester, and those of you who taught in spring are familiar with it, is like you'll just spend a lot more time troubleshooting than you might in a normal class, right? And so I made little like instruction videos for things. Um, you know, I made videos walking them through assignments I normally would make, but just to try to make things as easy as possible for them, um, because it is trickier, right? Taryn, uh, you said you were in international conferences. 
I mm -hmm. have two international students and I had one international student from Morocco. I don't think he had connectivity. And I have now one student from China and I got an email that China doesn't like Google. And I don't mm -hmm. know if you have any experience with Zoom in China or a country that doesn't like Google. Yeah, I mean, again, I was chatting with people in Brazil and it was fine. I don't think there was anyone from China on. There was someone from Mexico. There were people from Europe and Australia, but I don't think, at least I wasn't on with anyone from China. So I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, that might be worth a Google. Okay. And just be like, does Zoom work in China? <laughs> Or Diana, Diana, yeah. you might ask uh, John Wang that question. You might ask John. John who? Wang in our computer science department. Wang. W yeah, because yeah, this, this, this email sounds like um, this student has a virtual private network. However, we are sure, we're not sure how reliable it will, it will be. So I think we're gonna have problems with some international students. Yeah, I have a student who's in Australia. So she's not going to be able to attend class live. <laughs> no. No, I had one from Japan too, and it was in the middle of the night when we had the class, so she, she very seldom made it <laughs> last time. Yeah, so again, we all have to have workarounds and hacks and change our attendance policies and record things mm -hmm. I not normally record, but just to try to accommodate. And again, like, I don't know if anyone was on this q and I think it might have been the one in June, but Maynard just said, oh yeah, we anticipate that at any time 10% of your students will be out because they have COVID. Yeah. Oh, I think what we can do, what we can do is have them record, for instance, I do a lot of presentations, have them record their presentations and send them to you and you can show them in class and send the recording that you get from the class later so it's not going to be synchronous with them but it can be uh okay. another thing i did in spring for students that the tech was a problem for them is um when they were supposed to lead class discussion i just had them do it on blackboard discussion boards instead um we got mm -hmm. a conversation going there and then that day we just didn't have class because they were doing the work offline so yeah Perhaps. <laughs> are, you, are you doing 50 flex or are you doing remote? I'm completely remote because I have not one, not two, not but three risk factors for COVID. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I got to send Carla all my private health information. Woohoo! Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I have to go. And if anyone has any other questions, feel free to email me um, and I will send the link to the video after it processes and uploads. Um, and then I will send the chat with all the links in it. So thank you all for attending. Again, you helped me. Too. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Taryn. Thanks, thanks Taryn. Taryn. It was great. Thank you. You're going to send the, all those links in an email, Taryn? Yep. Good for you. This has been very instructive. Thank you. You're welcome.